How you doing, Shorty? There you go, so not really. Not bad. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what we got. So Uh, today, uh, I don't know if you guys had a chance to read the Shorty's Corner. Uh, I think it was, I was leaning bearish right out of the gate, uh, and they kind of did that, right? But then they trapped a lot of shorts here. And then they reclaimed the PV value area high, and that, that was my breaking point to the upside, right? So if we did reclaim that, which was kind of around the 4140, which was right here, uh, it was a strong chance they were going to go, but they did set, if you guys think about this, uh, for the day, they put this high here. So this was your high of the day kind of opening range here. Uh, and then they popped it, they came back, they gave you a little retest, and then they took off. Uh, if you look at the profile, right, for the whole run up here, <clears throat> I would say it looks pretty poor. Yeah. Uh, just up here, right, and then they consolidated, you know, if you extend it all the way to the right, of course, it's going to give you a, a P-shaped profile at the top, and we're closing right within the 68% here. So, and it's a pretty, you know, heavy, when you think about the volume profile, right? So if I was to go here and highlight it, uh, it's a pretty wide value area. I mean, there's a lot of volume accumulated here and expanded here. So it's not really concentrated at the top on the volume side. So let's see, you know, if they're able to pop, you know, ideally what you want to see tomorrow is you, you want them to break this level here, which is 41.79. 4180 and then you could target right 4194 and 7 would be your 6 and we'll get to those but that would be your 6 levels that you're kind of targeting to go to next but this is just today and the idea behind you know, the scenario that worked today was pretty much the scenario one uh, which was your PD value area high along with the <coughs> just delete this along with the CPOC so So uh, here's your to break the PD value area high. Yeah, that was the plan, right? So we said if if they're able to reclaim that, I mean, from this D shape here, they, you know, they did trap a lot of people here, right? They came back here, they didn't even yeah. break the low of the day. So reclaiming this was important, right? It was important for them, and it was important for sentiment because if we look at this now, I'm just going to run 65 minutes here, mm -hmm. and if you grab this guy. Right here. This was your POC right here, right? Which matches that value area high that I just talked about. Yep. So if I go on 30 minutes, maybe you won't then, but basically this was the value area high right here, and then you can go into one hour. This was your area that you're playing, right? And obviously, you're not going to take a trade here. But once you're able to pop that, you see they gave you uh, not the best retest, but they gave you something, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, tomorrow I meant like um, when. Uh, the yeah, we'll get there. 29. Yeah. yeah, we'll get there. Okay. So if you guys look at the typical P shapes, for instance, here, what do you guys see? What's the difference here? that one and this one. The last one is really wide. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Just to get the top. There's a big volume node at the bottom. Here you have a big volume node and that, that node extended that volume value area here. Right? So there's a lot of participants willing to participate here and then obviously I, I really can't diagnose like is it that, that ceiling conversation that triggered this? sell off today because at the same time, you know, what can happen tomorrow is that they say that that ceiling is not signed and then what happens, right? You will get uh, probably a sell off, right? Last time that this happened on the debt ceiling, uh, SPX went down 18%. Mm. So it could be that this was a last hooray, right? Uh, in case, you know, they want to sell more at the top. Because when you look at the volume here, if you got more than 30 minutes, I mean, yeah, you're going up, this is going down, right? So you have a bearish volume anomaly right out of the gate. You have a really strong auction on the downside. 
So you take this candle out, you take the previous 30 minutes, a really good bearish engulfing candle. Uh, and, you know, I would say a ton of people got trapped here at 41.26, right? Uh, and then they basically reversed it. They gave another trap like we wanted to go downside. But look at this. It really should have been a reversal here in terms of manipulation, but it seems like some higher powers were like, nope, let's pop it. But I think that's where the retail comes in, right? And that's what I was drawing here. Uh, I did mention this in, in, in the, I believe, in the shorties corner as well. Yeah, nice trend line on the top. I don't know if you guys read that, but that's, I did post that in the notes just to note it in case they do start breaking that. That was the idea that they were going to run this. Mm. And I said, you know, 236 would be a nice, and you had, you know, the liquidity at the top, and what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. So for your people, I'm not sure what your level of understanding is. Usually there's some liquidity left when you have these strong highs or lows, right? So like, for instance, they took this liquidity out here. Uh, they took a couple of liquidities here. You guys see them, they, they use this liquidity then they had a trend line liquidity here. So you see them here grabbing liquidity. Most people are going long. They grab the liquidity, come back down. And then we had a couple of equal lows here, right? So if you go here, you see that they're coming here. They're trapping the liquidity on the downside. So a really giant move forming, right? Growing. And I think that's the result of this move. I honestly don't think this is a continuation pattern for tomorrow. At least it doesn't look like to me, and for the same reasons I mentioned previously, when I see a P shape like this that has a pretty wide value area and it has a bump like this, uh, it makes me think that this more is like a B. Yeah. Right. So you know them losing this level here, you know, could trigger a sell off all the way to here. So this level here, high chance you go here. So that's a, that's a good play to look at, right? In case you want to play the momentum, depending on what kind of trader you are. Yeah. As they arrive here, I would expect that they get a bounce. Right? And then you guys will see this. Uh, let me just delete this. I'll hide this for a moment. And now watch this. As they so remember there's a lot of extended data here coming in. You know, there's data extended here, there's data extended here. So if you go on regular, this is what your regular day looks like. Is this really a breakout? No. I mean, think about it. What did they do here? How about you guys look at this? What is this? It's the gap that still needs to be filled up top. They, they just have opportunity to fill the gap, right? This is your Monday gap. I was really hoping they were. And I mean, that's okay if they fill it. I just don't see why are people so excited that this was some major run. I mean, maybe after having shitty range for a while. 58 yeah. points. Woohoo. There's days when I wouldn't play 58 days, right? I mean, when you think about this, right, this this is a pretty massive run. And if they continue this tomorrow, then honestly, tomorrow I think you have a chance, you know, especially if you can see them kind of popping here, right? So if you extend this over here and you look now, well, there's a chance, right, that you might have a kind of flip here. So let me just put this, uh, where's this thing? What am I missing? So if you think about the days, right? So this is Wednesday, Thursday, let's see, Monday. So there is a gap that they used here. This is your Sunday, right? Monday to Sunday. So this is your opening gap that they used here. And you can see here, right? They struggled to go above it. And finally, when they got above it, they used last week's gap here between Monday and Tuesday, and they filled it. And then you think about it, there's a large gap on the bottom as well. If you want to talk about gaps, <laughs> there's a lot of them here, right? They came back to this gap, they bounced. They're kind of playing this game of uh, hard to swing, right? Because uh, how many people swung calls based on today's auction, action and auction, right? Anyone? Uh, nope. 
So tomorrow, what they could do, if people saw calls, they give them boost, they come back, they retest, they do something like this. Why is it that they can't do this tomorrow? Right? Highly doable, amazing. right? That's random, right? So uh, don't take something like this. Don't let the market and FOMO cause you to be like, man, I missed something. You really didn't I mean think about it. Here's your profile. You really haven't missed much. You know, your value area high is 52, so this might not be a bad one to retest based off one, two, three, four, five, eight days. We call it nine days. Nine days, you know, this is your POC here at 52, well, I'm sorry, at 37, which is almost equivalent to what we have here from March 30th, right? Yeah, I got 38. So it's kind of like you know, 38.25, yes, that's what we have. And then these, this is your, you know, your Sigmas. I don't know why my color to change them in 30. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And here's your first sig, and look what happened here. I mean, they're tapping this level almost perfectly now. Uh, I am on RTH, I mean, that's okay. Uh, and here's your regular. And this will definitely change if you include electronic. Well, not much here. Uh, let me check 68. It's identical, so it really doesn't really shift. Uh, and there's a, <laughs> there's a little bit of a problem here, I guess. Uh, sure. Where's your starting point up there? Uh, Same starting point. It would be March 31st. Okay. So now we're just looking at this. I mean, look at this range here. This is. Sigmas didn't change very much, did they? Uh, did not, but the POC didn't shift up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't you think we should have shifted up a few points? Yeah. <laughs> we should definitely, right, be... If the price is moving, the volume should be what? Higher. If the price well, is moving should higher. Be, it should be confirming it, right? The idea, yeah. though, the idea is the, the volume is confirming the price movements. Yeah. So if it's not, uh, there's something to be said about that. Right? So now, let's see how we react to this level here, 4164, I'm just going to go back to R2 for a moment, so we do have a gap at first sig here, just so you guys know. So the two, three cigar here, uh, I just didn't highlight it, just that they're compacting, meaning not a lot of volume is there at the moment, right? So a lot of volume is concentrated right here where we are. Um, then if you guys look here, that's your POC. I'm definitely marked it back over here. So that's our, I guess the POC. For me, it was 41.39 yesterday. Anyone else or just me? Yeah, I was. kept mine at 38. I could have sworn I had 39. Yeah, you, you did. Let me check the charts. I remember that. Yeah, I had 41.39.50. Yeah. So the POC shifted down here. I guess there's a lot of volume accumulation here. Then it burst. Um, and then if you guys check, if you, anyone check two, two hour volume? So this was your stopping candle in two hours, I guess. And this was the takeoff. But look at the volume here. So now, you know, just four shits and giggles. Let's take a look at this candle. Through this volume here. I love that. Right? 
and this one through here. So what's happening here? Decreasing volume. So you have same size candles, right? Uh, but your volume is pretty much going down. And isn't it crazy? As soon as they're coming to some levels, right? You get these giant candles to kill the puts. Yeah. These are your killer puts. I call them your killer whales. Oop, they popped them off. Yeah, Look they got this. me. They, they came down here and they popped, they killed the puts. I mean, come on, guys. After a two hour candle that looks like this, you get a reversal of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four hours, it's even better. <laughs> yeah, we're about to go. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it just looks a little funny, I would say. Right? And I think these are the key levels, right? So then, you know, if you guys look at the, the weekly POC, I was actually looking at something on the monthly earlier. Oh, I'm sorry, in the yearly. So here's your monthly POC right here. So this is your April, and this is your April value very high. Did anyone notice where we rejected today? I was looking at it. I had a zone mark there. This. Did everybody else have this on your charts? The April rockets did. Yep. Because I mean, think about it. You were. What do we use? I mean, we use prior day sessions for the dailies. What do we use for weeklies and monthlies? Prior sessions. Yeah. Right. So now, let's think about it. Are we having a breakout? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is this a breakout? No. Some would say a clear one. Ah, come on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know where people get the ideas that these are breakouts, guys. It was just a 53 point move within the range, and this was a put killers, right? So people loaded up on the puts, and what's the best way for market makers to collect money? A quick move up that you don't expect, right? And they did it, right? I mean, they're, they're not even respecting some of the levels, right? Besides the value area. So the monthly points are playing, right? So if you think about it, I would have this level here identified. And this would be potentially a level where we might bounce because it seems like they're respecting monthly value area now so much. They're coming back inside. As soon as we lose it, we're using the first sick. But as soon as they lose it, they reclaim it. They basically accept it. Seems like we're going to the opposite side. And we just obviously went there. So now if they come up to this 4152, which we know is a what, two year POC, right? Uh, that yeah. there's a chance that they're going to bounce it there. Yeah. Right. So if you go even here, I'm pretty sure you'll find the level on the 53 level here. Right. It was a POC for a while before we shifted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if you guys look at the weekly, so monthly, we're in balance, right? Then you look at the weekly, shift over here. There's your weekly. <clears throat> so this is your current week. You're out of balance on the weekly, right? And then you take a look at this crazy profile that you have here. And where do we reject there? So this is your week called May 1st. Look at this shitty valley area here that's being broken down with single prints inside here. We still haven't broken this. So if you were to put this, you still haven't broken this four week balance. And then if you look at this one here, 4186, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a little bit of trouble right here. So this is your last week of April value area high. Yeah, and what can you that. tell about this value area high that it's pretty true? I mean, it would apply for the rest of the sessions we've had. Take a look at it. So the reason why I draw, the, draw these boxes and lines, uh, so if you think about it, this was the range where they didn't like it above, but what else? They didn't like it below. They didn't like it at the bottom either. So 
can they pop here now and make a lower high here? Pop it up to here to the six, and that might be a good entry for a potential short. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's exactly what happened. If they pop it up here, they might trap some longs. I wouldn't be shocked if they, you know, take this liquidity here. They might come in and tap that liquidity here and grab it. And then if you see that they're wicking with just the, you know, going above it with the wicks, not with the full body, that should give you a little bit of a sign, right? Hey, something's wrong. <laughs> And you guys should definitely make sure that you note that. Right? And here you have a gap. That's what they're hitting right now. So I'm just telling you everything that I notice in the chart. Necessarily, do I put everything on the chart itself? So here's that. So you have a gap here that they're trying to fill now. If they fill that, you have the last week of April, which is the value area high that we're playing in, right? Your time inside of that one and I'm pretty sure if you grab from here to here use 95 you're probably going to get the same result there's your 68 matches right there on the first sig here now if you use this and check 95 or that <laughs> that I remember so it stops here, so that's why I said that last week of April will be a very important level, I think. Tomorrow, 4186. Yeah. Any questions on what we just covered, what we built, and how long did it take us? 20 minutes? I have one question. Um, the 4086 line, you have the image, it's in between the first fig and the second fig. What, what was that? The 4086, what was the significance? So 41886 is the last week. Oh, no, of no, April. no, 4186. I'm sorry, 408650? 408650? This one right here? Yeah. I think it was supposed to be here. Two seconds. This was. These should have shifted more than the top. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. So these shouldn't have, why shouldn't these have shifted yet? But the volume wasn't there. Yeah, I was gonna say the volume ran up, not down. No, the volume's not there. So you can't say that this is gonna expand or change but the volume is never in. Okay, yep, thank you. So this, this is your box here to kind of give you like, hey, if we go above this and we hold this level, then you can be like, okay, we are trying to get out of this value area, right? The stock market never goes, a lot of people, you know, think we go from, from bull to bear like this. Markets never do this. They do this only in books. Right. It doesn't work that way. Uh, fortunately, the markets do, you know, this, and then when they're ready for a move, right, before they change the direction, they do some testing, and then they might have a drop like this or something, right? So it goes from balance, imbalance, to balance, right? The, the key is that they're always seeking new balances, right? After an imbalance, they're always going to find... Yeah, where do we go next? Where are we going to be accepted? And that's kind of what we're doing here. The green box is the latest acceptance area that we've had. I mean, you think about it, right? So if I was to change this, let's change to 95. It's very close to these six right here. So this would be our second six. I don't know why I missed them so bad. <clears throat> this would be our second six. And then obviously this is going to be the third six. I don't know why. Your second SIG is uh, 41.92.50? 91.25. Okay. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's right. So, okay. now this would be our range, right? I mean, the whole market is bracketed, right? If you really think you want to take a trade between this and this, 
then you know that's not something I would do, right? I wouldn't be looking for longs here, guys. That's just me personally. I don't look for longs in the bracketed market when they're in the tops. Right? You're looking potentially look for the shorts, especially if they break this like they did here, and they give you a break, right? And if it's the same scenario like this, and I'm just going to give you a quick lesson. If you go on 30 minutes here, right, uh, especially for New York folks. So here, right, you have a lower highs, you know, the macro and micros. And here, right, so this is the change of character where it happened to the upside. Then they went higher, they popped, and you see these higher lows, higher highs. So where's my change of character here? Where the gap is? Pretty much where the gap is, right? So if you think about it, this is my change of character right here. Or it was, I'm sorry, or previous. So this is your change of character. So now when they lost it, right? Uh, the idea is that this is your first revisit since this imbalance, right? How many times have you been here? Just, just once. You haven't been there yet. Yeah. So you're telling me that these sellers right here that we had, he offloaded here heavily, and then yeah. he brought it back up to probably 50% of his range, right? Right on. They brought it 50%, and then they sold off again with pretty aggressive volume. And now you're coming back Somebody's here. Hot. Somebody's mic is hot. Can't hear very good. Sorry. Touching. So now, you know, the, the, the idea is you have the, you know, the, two, the second and third set. You have some liquidity. If you can get the ideal setup here, if you want some confirmation, remember, you know, we talked about this. It looked very bullish. People were scared to swing, right? Everybody was afraid to swing shorts, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is your lesson, right? And it's okay if you're wrong. If they go above and they break, look for the change of character, and you can short below that, right? And you can put the high of the day as a stop loss. You're, from here, I, I always buy long puts, meaning I buy them far out. Like I have some spy, I think I got, uh, don't quote me, I think September or July, and I also have December puts. I know December for sure. I don't know if it's July or September, but I got the 410 score. But I already entered a position in case they have a gap down for some reason tomorrow that I catch it. If they push it up here, they give me a setup. That's a logical ad for me. Right, and I'll add there, and then if I see them losing this value area high in April, I'll add a little bit more to a winning position and push it down all the way to our April value area low, probably take 80% off, keep the rest in case they want to visit our friends on the bottom. Okay. Any questions so far? Does everybody get an idea of what you're supposed to do? Hey, sure. Did you? I joined late. Sorry. Did you already go over NQ? Because no, yeah. I mean, with ES, it's easy to see. It's not a breakout on this, but mm -hmm. NQ is a little bit more. I mean, I don't know. No, or is no, it just I mean, because it's more volatile? Well, it's more volatile, and you know, uh, if you look at you know the combo here. Uh, what, what's pushing them is it's this, right? It's six stocks that are basically driving the market to the top right now. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that, you know, NQ is doing better. It's just how the distribution and NQ is set up on a weighted average of that portfolio, right? Apple carries a big weight. I think it's almost nine, ten percent. So, I mean, you know, for other stock, they can keep falling and selling, and they create FOMO on the main names that everybody knows, and then, you know, maybe somebody will sell. Yeah, NASDAQ did fail on the value high, taking the all-time high to the recent uh, October low. That value high is actually at 13,657.50. So, you're talking about this? Yep. I'm taking there. it from there to October. I was mine's coming up as oh, hold on, man. thirteen six. Now um, I guess I'm yeah. looking at daily. Yeah, I'm on daily. Oh, here, yeah. you're right. 
I had it. And it, it, it barely pierced through and kind of rejected. Well, for me, it didn't. Yeah. Did you say NASDAQ or Microsoft? Because oh, NASDAQ. Set October or you did yeah, all yeah. Time, all time. yeah the 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 high the all time okay. high, all the way down to that October low that that lowest low. Yeah, that's what I did. I have it at August. I have it at fourteen four. Hmm. That's odd. Unless you grabbed from here, which is down till fourteen. Oh, actually, you know what? It looks like I'm grabbed a little bit farther back than the high. That's Maybe why. Here. I must have grabbed a little bit off. Mine is like November 21st, I guess. That's why it's off. I still get the 14th. Yeah, no, it's not... I, my my thing was off. I just I saw it hit perfect. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have, tend to hit pretty perfect. So let me show you here. Let me bring it back. What so, was the one where it was perfect a second ago? Was that the Qs? That was Microsoft. Oh. Yeah, Microsoft is pretty much done here. But let's see. I mean, if I was to tell you that, you know, Microsoft, after everything you hear, is going to be 9% from all-time highs. Uh, yeah, Microsoft's coming up. I believe NVIDIA is also. AI, AI. NVIDIA, AI, AI. Uh, 30178. It's right here, guys. This is the setup that I love. I know it looks scary, but that's okay. Uh, they're going to pop forward this. Once they lose this, I mean, this is where I'd like to add. Probably tomorrow, start adding some leaps on the video. I mean, and they could potentially push it to here, but that's okay as well. Because right now, I think there's a lot of FOMO here being created in the market. There's that gap at like 310. On, on the video? In video, yeah. I might I might have seen something. I don't know. Or there's a FEG maybe. Yeah, oh. there's that FEG. Like this one here or something? I if that's three ten. I don't know. Yeah, they felt this balance already. They tried to build this hole. Yeah, I think they're gonna try to push it here. I I doubt that we get a momentum up tomorrow, but let's see. That's, I mean, this is just funny. A really good stop. I think you're goal. too far back. Me, doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, this is the only price action that the video has about three hundred. Right. Sorry. Approaching all time for it. Let me just look at something. Right now. Through this week, 
I'm sorry, I found it. On the weekly on NVIDIA, there's like a weekly imbalance between 302 and 307. So what I did here, i uh, just kind of tell you why, why did I grab this, because this is where it seems like the low has been set. I potentially include these two, right? Because if you look at it, this is the range, pretty much the, the bottom range where we consolidated on MQ. You see the pop here, right? So if I was to draw this line, uh, this is when we kind of set these lows. I was looking at these lows, lows here. Uh, you can include this, and then it kind of gives you the, you know, we went up. To the highs, we came back, we tested the lows, and now you're going. I said, you know, it looks like you're headed up, but I think if they're targeting anything, you know, higher, I think it's 13.824. I was shocked today that they broke, uh, you know, the 13.575. That was uh, a little bit weird that they did it with such ease, right? Right there at fifty percent right now. I'm just looking to see if there's any exhaustion in any time from this show. Hey, Shorty, can I ask a question on NQ? Mm -hmm. So what I did is I went back to August 22, and I had, like, kind of support resistance line, and I grabbed an FBP from that little peak there, and that's where I got my levels for today. Is that something I can rely on, or did I just kind of walk out well, today? So let me see. Are you talking about this here? Yeah, so I went back to August of 22 where they pierced over that line. Okay, like this one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep, and I went in and I I kind of grabbed that section like to see where again, they're... Like right here? Yeah, like I uh, I went to a lower time frame, like 30 minutes, and then did it there, and then I got my levels off that, and they yeah. seem to be supporting yeah, that. Of course, yeah, because this will be your, you know, this is where the imbalance started, right? So it could be, so let me see, did I draw that? The black line that's there. I guess you have this level, 13,657. Is that correct? It should be close to me. All right, let me jump over. I was on a different one. So yeah, um, you can definitely do it. I mean, it's a far, right? I mean, it's a far shot, right? You're almost a year out, so you, know, you have to find it. But yeah, you can definitely do that because that's an untapped supply, right? From it, you ran down, and then, you, of course, you created a, you know, you have a V-puck here as well that, that profile created there and you see that they respected it they came back they rejected it they had a lot of trouble with it then they popped over it and then they hit that remaining supply at that peak i mean that's pretty much where it started right that's where it started they started and then they were accumulated and sold off so no that, that's that's correct because uh today when i was talking on sky it's in our number Uh, does anyone remember what I asked you guys? Like, where are we and why do we reject there? Yeah. Did anyone yeah. take a look at this? So, I mean, th this is the same concept, Jackson, that you had here, right? Uh, it's just that you went far back, right? So, one thing about market, it does have memory, right? Uh, but the distance, the further you go in distance, right, to find a level, the less probable that it is, right? So if you think about statistics, you're going far out for intraday level to trade it off of. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was I was just wondering how that kind of weighed out because, you know, you yeah, talk it about lowers the your probability. The it lowers your probability just a bit. 
because the market has a memory, but it's just, it's very distant. It's a year out, and especially if you're trading for zero DTE, the odds of that level being as remembered and the odds of that level being remembered as a strong high, I would say decreases a little bit. So definitely play it on gotcha. if you if you maybe buy some time, right? If you bought some puts at that level, uh, that's what I did on SPY, right? As we were approaching, I was looking to short it and start accumulating some, accumulating some contracts and it, and it worked out pretty well. I don't know, I was up maybe $100. <laughs> couple of grand of investment so it's not a good return but it worked right so now if let's say I'm playing you know 420 as a stop loss right then I have the probability in my favor and I have manageable risk but if I was to play let's say here you know I played weekly let's say I played weeklies or zero DT and I got it on the first stop right as we are approaching here so you come here you take it I think you could make some money, right, on these zero DTs in two minutes if you're, you know, satisfied with 20, 30%. It would have worked, and that's, I think, what you did, right? But there's chances sometimes that, you you know, you can see something like this, like this candle here, the pin bar. And then, of course, your entry would be right below it, right, the break. Uh, but, you know, some people are not satisfied with this, and then when it returns, they're, they're stopped out. And that becomes like almost, you know, a fallacy in people's trading is they get in here and then they put the trailing stop at break even. Let's say they enter here and they don't want to lose a penny. Well, when you trade options, it's a little bit harder, right? Because you, you have a lot more that's going on, you know, mathematically, right? Theta burning, contract being on, on, on futures, it's a little bit easier. You can just put a level here. If they tap it, you're out. But then you lose the opportunity. And that's where people make a lot of mistakes. You know, you took this trade on the break here, your stop loss is high here. It doesn't matter about your trailing stop here. Because if you're taking this trade here, uh, and I'm giving, I know a few people that do it in this court. If you did this and then you move your, you know, risk to the bottom, I mean, come on, how, how's this fair? Statistically, how's it fair? <laughs> you you want to show a zero risk for 68% reward. It just doesn't add up, right? You stick to your plan a few times. It's okay if you, if your reward is right. I mean, not that I'm, you know, maybe I would test this right here as a target. Like if this is your reward, it's two to one. If this is what you're trading, and you're trading like you did Jackson on zero DT, then stick with it. Let it play out. As soon as you move this out and this move happens, you're gonna you're gonna beat yourself up on it. And what is it that you might do here now? Now, you know, you might get trapped if you think about higher highs, higher lows. You might say, oh, we broke here, and what do you do here? To make up for what you missed here, what, what is your first thing that most people do? Size bigger. Yeah. Triple of the position. Yeah, you go short, <laughs> uh, right? And then you lose this trade, That then you're like, oh, fuck, the system doesn't work. Well, does the system really work, or did you have the patience as a trader? Right, that, that's the difference when people, when you analyze your trades, right, and you look at this, right, let's say you got, you know, you shorted the bottom today, uh, let's say when Q or SPY, whatever, if you took this, right, and you see that they shorted it here, let me just, where is that? It's a little bit of what I talked about this morning. So here's your low of the day, right? On on a previous day, correct? So here's your low of the day here at 410. I mean, when you think about it, you're still about the low of the day, right? So meaning that you're not really, really bearish, right? You came about sooner than the low of the day. And then you had, I would say, a nice little gap up, right? <laughs> you gapped up nicely here and you stayed in the range, right? So you see that this there's a couple of imbalanced candles and they came back and filled them, right? And now you look at this when you know when the real move started happening. You go here, right? You really don't break the low of the day. So if you took a short, let's say on this candle here, on this giant wick that failed to make a higher high. Well, let's say you took a short here and you saw these candles. This is this is where retail really, really fucks up. Uh 
they take the short and let's say they're up 15 20 percent here so they you know they're up here they pull the you know, profits and you're still good right but if you took even this loss here right if you moved your break even now you don't even get any profit because this candle probably could have yielded nice points right i mean you think about it 4 11 12 to 4 10 65 that's you know from what's been going on lately that's not bad you can make 20 30 percent and retail doesn't take this because now they're like me and we, we took out the initial low pump of the day most likely we're going to go down test the low of the day and look at the quick return we never saw this level again so instead of this trade let's say if you took this trade for some reason uh short here you took this break here you really <laughs> uh either take the profits right or, you know, don't first mistake is move your break even point down and you get stopped here on the swick and now you short again here and that's where your risk reward is really bad. I mean you're you're in it for a tiny little bit of profit and you don't even know what's going, everything's wicking up. Uh, so you get into trouble just because you doubt yourself and then you make a mistake and you re enter and you size up. And honestly you, you you missed it because you moved the break even. If you trust yourself and you set up, you really have a reason to move the break even. What does it tell you psychologically if you keep moving the break even? You don't believe in the trade. Oh, you're afraid to lose money. I mean, are you really accepting the risk if you're afraid to lose money? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if, if you're afraid to lose money, then you shouldn't be in the trade. But let it play out, right? Let, let the trades kind of go on and play out. Okay? So, I don't have to on that, but I, I see a few of you making that type of mistake kind of daily, so. Just want to make sure. This I suffer from that. Yeah, it's, a, it's a big issue in, in, in the retail world, and a lot of people are like, yeah, I had my trade that break even. Uh, I don't say it many times, I think, because I don't, I want you to gain your confidence naturally than me telling you that you're afraid because you're moving your break even point. So, it, it will come to you, just don't force it. Yeah. And she does look stronger than Yes. And then a little bit of liquidity here. I mean, they, they could potentially go here rapidly and go down, but I think this level here will be somewhat important if they decide to continue the breakouts and, you know, the retail or somebody continues buying. I know there was a lot of large orders on Microsoft, NVDS, NVIDIA uh, today after hours. So. This candle here is worth noting uh, on MQ. Does anyone see why? Why is this candle important? It hasn't decided which way to go. Okay. What else? Effort and the size. Yeah. What else? Keep going. Like, despite all that volume, it couldn't get higher. Yeah. What else? Well, they pushed it below the PO forming POC. <laughs> exactly. So you have a you have a bearish volume anomaly. You have a start of an absorption here. Uh, if you see uh, the candle before that, right? This was a failed auction, right here, right. So tomorrow, don't be surprised if this level right here, whatever this is. I'm just telling you price action. If this level tomorrow gets taken out quickly and a reversal from there. 
something like I don't know why it's doing it. Uh, and something you know it could be as drastic as bringing it back to this level, which I think needs to be retested. Why would this level need to be retested? So if it dumps, what would you do in the queue here? You mean if it breaks that? Yeah, but tomorrow when it comes to touch this, perfect. Take tomorrow. profit. Well, the idea is to go along here. You're going to get a bounce here, I promise. These are fresh buyers. We just broke some alley area highs, right? Some SIGs. These buyers are going to be here. Whoever, you know, whatever they're defending here, their position, uh, they're going to be here. If you want to short this, you can definitely, you know, look for a short based on the six that we have. Let me go to the others here. So you have this one here, right? I think we're way above it. I think we're somewhere here at the max. Make even more sense now. Yeah, it would definitely make sense. Well, so why would it make sense to, to go along here? This in this zone now. You also have a SIG. So what would that mean uh, from a value perspective? That would mean that there is value in the the peanut butter should be they want peanut butter pro higher because it's rejecting that value range exactly so that means it's accepting to go higher right yeah so yeah. you can expect and guarantee your buyers will be here if you want to make money this is a setup for a buy right so you go balance and balance either you accept or you reject so in this case right they did whatever they did here they accumulated they dropped they popped they went higher, right? And now when they come back, you jump in with the acceptance, right? You put your stop loss below it. You find it maybe on lower time frames. Uh, you look at the volume here between these candles, use value area low or some kind of shelf in between as a stop loss to hide behind. But this is your goal long level because you're looking for acceptance. Your job as a trader is not to really care if it's up or down. Your job is to figure out the market information being told by profile by the prints or if you use any unbalanced volume or whatever your story is that you're using you want to know if it's being accepted tomorrow or not your job is not to be mad if it's going up or going down your job is to be on the right side of the tree so don't forget day traders don't don't really have emotions towards up or down and what else would you say why this is important? Anyone else? The shelf? Yeah, there's the shelf I keep <laughs> highlighting, right? It's also kind of like a high volume node, right? These are skinny valleys in between, right? This skinny valley is, what the volume is, uh, which skinny belly is weaker here? And which one is stronger between all of these? How would you guys engage that? I mean, the the wider the the gap, I guess, or the yeah, like yeah. So the wider the deeper the gap, the easier it is probably to go to the right. So compared to this one here, uh, you know, there's no volume. These would be called single trends, right? In here. These are your single prints. There's a high chance if you're to get back inside this gap uh, that you can kind of go here. So now when you look at this shelf here that's sitting, is this shelf higher probability bound than if you're to come to this shelf? No. There's two conflicting things. First, in order to break extreme highs, right, 
low and a high. What needs to happen? What can, who, who steps in for buying? In the initiative. You need initiative buyers and sellers. Remember, price discovery is not me and you. Sometimes, go put a bid tomorrow. <laughs> uh, go put a bid somewhere tomorrow, right out of the gate to buy. You think you're not going to get filled? You, you'd probably get filled. <laughs> Right, but uh, what if, what happens if you try to sell it immediately, seconds after, right here, and the price is still here? You buy here by accident, and seconds later, you know, you're trying to sell right here, but the price is still in this range. What happens? You gonna get well, it? No. No, it's not gonna fill you. Yeah, it's not gonna fill you. So back in the day, do you guys know how traders tested the supply? Can anyone imagine how would you test without diagrams, without profiles, market structures? How would you test the supply? Buying, bidding. Bid higher. You didn't have tape guys. There was no tape. Throw out a few bids or ask or whatever. Like Say low it. volume. Say it again. Just throw out some test ones. Like not like your whole position, like tiny, tiny. Keep on. I don't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> so the way we you know, the way you used to do this is let's say you want to buy twenty thousand shares. Right? So before markets became electronic, it wasn't as fast, right? You can probably click, you know, on SQQ at Acting. I mean, how long does it take to get filled on 5,000 SQQ? I've, I've seen you trade a lot more. Um, uh, Mike, millisecond. Millisecond. <laughs> right? It, it's, you know, that's where the dealers, the locals, that's their job. They, they fill you in in this, and you can't tell if there's a lag. Back in the day, you're like, hey, I want to buy 20,000 shares of SQQ, and you go to a bucket shop, right? You go to a store where you buy stocks. And you go to these little brokerage houses, and you're like, you don't want to see 20,000. Let's say you get a tip from somebody who's like, hey, this stock's going to go up. Well, you see how quickly they will fill in. You know, you can see the daily. There was retail, and there was reports on the daily volumes, right? So people would get an idea of, you know, how active the stock is, is a liquid, you know, after the day closes and whatnot, after it's all reconciled. But during the session, you come in and you take 500 shares. Let's say you see a pattern, you know, it's going up, right? You notice the bid quote on the screen, if you have any of those, and you see, you know, there's some, you know, bids coming in, some orders flying through. You put in 500 and you see how, you see how long does it take for you to get filled? If it's easy for me to get filled at here at 500, what does that tell you about sellers? There's, there's, there's plenty of supply. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of supply. If I get filled instantly on this 500, I don't know if I want to execute this order right here. And that's how they're able to know before they would do 500, then they would do like 1500, right? And they would see, you know, oh, check mark filled. And they're like, whoa, how quickly did I get filled here? Can you buy peanut butter? Remember the peanut butter? If, you know, uh, I'm selling the, let's say you're, you know, same, same concept here, right? You're trying to buy peanut butter at $9, right? And you're like, hey, anyone peanut butter? And somebody instantly comes to you, he's like, yeah, I got peanut butter for nine. What, what would you think? Are you getting yeah, a good deal? Your peanut butter? I pay too much. Yeah, I I'm not, you. I'll give you a scenario. Is there anyone that's not following or confused? I want to. It's okay if you are. Right? Is anyone not following? Okay. I'll, I'll believe it when I see the charts tomorrow in the profit section. If if you've ever been on the cruise ship, right, or well, and you get off the cruise ship. And then there's a lot of people that sell a bunch of shit, like activities, I mean, snorkeling and all the crap, right? Mm -hmm. How many different prices have you guys ever, you know, experienced there? 
Yeah, they got all kinds. But forty dollars for this, sixty dollars for that. That was then. And sometimes they sell the same product at drastically different prices, right? In, in pictures. <laughs> Yeah, and it's the same concept that, you know, they, they see who's hot, who wants doesn't want to mess it. There's people that won't try to, you know, negotiate any of it. And same thing here. So if they put in 5,000, let's say 2,000 shares, and they get it filled immediately, the guy back then is like, oh, oh never mind, there's a lot of supply here. But if he sees, uh, is anyone familiar with AOM? Anyone know what that is? No. When you buy uh, none. It's called O or Not, right? It's a feature that came in uh, to help traders traders uh, be protected. When you click in to buy 20,000 shares and you click All or Not, it means I either buy 20,000 shares at this price or don't buy any. Does that make sense? So basically, don't break out this 20,000 order in chunks. That's what AON means. Okay. So now... Electronically, you can't tell that. That's why I use volume for confirmation to see or the footprints, whatever. But before, this was a tactic they used, right? If they see that it's taking a little bit of time, a little bit of delay to get it, and then they test it at a higher number, right, to see how quickly that gets. I mean, if it took, let's say, I don't know, 15 seconds to get filled on 500 shares back then, then you give them 1,500, and they come back after a couple of minutes. They're like, yeah, we have it. We'll, we'll sell you that. Well, you know, then, then some things, you know, they're like, hey, man, they're, they're struggling finding the supply to sell to me. Then you go in with your order and you proceed. Does that make sense? That's why we kind of relate to using volume bar, bars and anomalies to tell you that same story here. Absorption or not absorption Any questions there? Nope. No, makes sense. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, if, if this clears the first SIG, uh, I would think that 4152 is going to be highly, you know, it's going to have some action there on this uh, POC, uh, this 50% here. Sure, which fifty percent is, but it was off by a few points. Yeah, sorry. so here, if it breaks sixty-four, be aware of this fifty. And, you know, for Acme, I know he uses F3Gs. There's one uh, here, right, at the fifty percent. So usually, I would think that would be a buy signal in, in that world, uh, but I'm not that familiar with it. So if you look here. That's your skinny belly, right? So, you know, why is it called bear value gap? It's also because there was no liquidity in that, right? So they came back there, most likely going to come back and fill it. The other interesting thing, he talks about like a gap like that, that uh, can be a measuring gap. Like it's halfway between the, yeah. like the run from the, not maybe not the very low, but the second low from the left. If that measures out similar, you know, it's kind of interesting. Just as an aside. Oh, okay. So you're saying from here to here? Yeah, like if that happens during the day, that it, it's hard to know prospectively. I'm not an expert, obviously, but like it's interesting that, that like from the low from the morning, that first big green candle or green volume, the next one, like the next big one, it's a red candle like over like t 10 candles with the big green volume. Yeah, from the bottom of that to the middle to there might be 50%, like you can expect 50% more, kind of. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, now uh, for tomorrow, if they lose this first thing, just be aware of these, I mean, uh, would I take a short here? And that's why I draw these, draw these profiles. Would I take a short here if they come back and retest and take a short here? I mean, it doesn't make sense. At least it doesn't to me because they can, they can pretty much rock it from here, right? So for me, you know, is it worth risking three points here? No, let them do this. 
Once they lose that shell frame, finally, someone once they lose it, then you can enter and still catch some. If you're playing this, I guess six points. I'm sure somebody would you probably wouldn't even get six points. That's, this shelf is pretty large, so if you're gonna play it, you know, you can play this entrance here, but make sure that your stop losses are a little bit wider, and then target the CPOC so you can adjust your position very properly. Shorty, you're, you're talking about 53 right there? Sorry, I can't see it on Bean's screen. Uh, 53, that's your, yeah, this is your 50%, the 50% is 55, 25. So, I'm, you know, I'm just saying I, I, would, I would think if they are breaking this tomorrow, especially every one of these liquidity zones, uh, like this one here, this one, this one's fairly large here. That's the one that we said that you can expect NQ to come, you know, as you call that, same spot. NQ has a potential for, I'm sorry, and ES has the same setup, I like NQ the way it moved, uh, to bounce there as well. So it would be somewhere around 41, 45. So I'll watch these shelves tomorrow. If you see them dumping, they, they can rock it from one of these shelves right here, right? They have a chance to go here. So I would, you know, be careful on zero DTs. If you buy time, I think you're okay. As you are inside the April value area high, unless you break it tomorrow, you're in trouble. But then April value area low is probably going to happen too. Just think about it. That is only 53 points, 54 points. We did it today. So between monthly value areas, you're just going up and down in a day. You would you, you would short that the loss of 64 though, right? The first thing. I would, but I would not short with zero DT. Mm. Yeah. I, I would add some time just in case they want to trap a little bit here. But I'm already in, in some puts for five, so let's see. They're getting a little weak right here, that's all I'm going to say. Well, let's see where we open in relationship to this POC. If we are above it, most likely we go higher. Uh, at least test the April value area high again. If we open below it, I'll be looking to see what happens tomorrow in the sentiment. Okay. Alright guys, well, I think that's it for me. I will... I am actually, tomorrow, my wife and I and the kiddos are traveling to Florida for the beach for three days, four days. Uh, it might be the last one uh, before my wife gives birth, so we're going to take a couple days off. I will not be trading probably Thursday and Friday. Uh, I will post notes on my PC and I'll post notes for you guys uh, if I see something unusual. And I think most of you guys that have been in the room can help the new guys as well uh, if they have questions on on the profiles. Hopefully you guys can help them with that. Thanks a lot, Jordy. Thank you. Thanks, Jordy. Have a safe trip. Thanks, it was great. Enjoy your trip. Thank you. Good night.